pulled it out. I could see a layer of red brick, and I knew that on the other side of that layer was freedom. But after the new paint job, some of the deputies became a lot more prickly about any specks of dirt on the walls. Deputy Miller was a new deputy. He seemed to be really picky and prissy about anything being dusty or dirty. One day, he came around early. Inspection. And the little one-inch wide hole I'd just made and patched in was still kind of wet and had a bit of dust from the mortar on it. Deputy noticed that little spot and touched it. He had no idea that right beside that one inch spot was a loose block, my digging and patching materials hidden inside. Looks like someone's been digging here. I don't know. I was fighting to keep a straight face, not show the panic I was feeling. Months of work for nothing. I felt like my heart was pounding out of my chest, and I was about to hyperventilate. But it'd be good if you get someone to fix it. I don't want to get blamed for it. I get maintenance to come in and take a look. This was on a Friday, and I knew that by Monday afternoon, someone would come and look at that wall and I'd be in the hole. That did not leave me enough time to get through the rest of the wall. Deputy Miller said that it would appear that some of the mortar around some of the blocks had been tampered with. Not removed, but, but tampered with. And we put it down, we'd make out a work order, turn it into maintenance, it was placed in the jail log of the observation of this, the correction officer. I'd spent months on this plan. And now I had 48 hours to pull off a completely different escape. Escaping during recreation was the only other choice I had. If I could get over the wall, then I could run to a spot on the roof where I could slide down to a lower section and follow my original escape route. But if I were to find a way to reach the top of the wall, the razor wire would be an obstruction preventing me from being able to reach the fence behind it. I could use the metal slats to solve the problem. I had about 20 in my wall. I bent them into S-shapes. I ripped up the sheets and braided rope, then attached the hooks to pieces of the rope. I'd use them to pin back the razor wire so it wouldn't snag me. I also braided a rope ladder that would hang from a hook from the fence with a band of newspaper to stiffen the steps. I needed a pole to hoist the ladder up. I used four three-foot sections of rolled up paper that could fit together into one long pole, about 12 foot long. On what would be the top section of the pole, I rigged an arm coming out off the tip of it at an angle of about 120 degrees.
All that night I stayed awake, knowing it was going to be risky with so many witnesses out there, and a camera and deputies that could spot me so easily. By Saturday morning, I had everything together, and I was ready for them to let us go to recreation. I put my red clothes on top of my blue clothes, and after lots of adjustments and tying stuff to my legs and torso, I was able to conceal my ladder, straps, and sections of the pole inside my clothes without it being too noticeable. Getting past the desk was the first step. I was hoping they wouldn't break their habit and search me. What do you got there? You can't take anything into the yard. I had to keep calm. This is my one chance. On Monday, they will discover what I've been doing and they'll put me back in solitary and I'll stay there until I get convicted. out in the rec yard and this is where my big challenge began recreation was only one hour and I knew if I got away it would be in the first 10 minutes while they were still busy with paperwork there were two ways I could be spotted either by the deputies looking through the window onto the rec area or on CCTV camera but I was pretty sure that the camera would have a blind spot deputies couldn't see the entire wreck area from behind the desk. The best spot was right above the camera, where I figured neither the camera nor the deputies could see me. But the razor wire there was grouped into a tighter pattern with little gaps. The other spot had bigger gaps in the razor wire and also had a small outcrop of building that I might be able to climb up. But I was pretty sure it was in view of the camera was real close to being inside of the deputies. I decided to try the first spot. I went around all the prisoners and told them what I was doing. Keep your mouth shut. And not to snitch on me. I assembled the pole, attached my rope ladder to the end, and lifted it up. But after several tries, I decided the grouping of razor wire there was too tight. And I couldn't get through to the fence. This was the only safe spot, and now it was out of the question. Now I was worried. I was much more likely to be seen by the deputies in the other spot. And it was in full view of the camera. This was one of the most nervous times of my life, knowing how easily I could be caught. I positioned myself next to the small outcrop of building. I had to work as quickly as possible and hope that by the time they noticed, it would be too late. I reassembled the pole. And after a few tries, I was able to hook the ladder to the fence. I used the building to help myself up. I climbed up, hooked one leg over an upper ladder step to hang on, 
and use my hands to work with the razor wire and make an opening. Then my prison uniform got snagged, so I had to leave it hanging there, like a red flag. I was finally on the roof of the jail. The hardest part of the escape was over. I had about a 20-foot drop into the alley. The soles of my jail shoes were thin. It would be like dropping 20 feet barefoot. But I had no choice. I jumped. John Parsons has escaped from jail in Ross County, Ohio. He is now on the run. It was at uh, 12.30 on Saturday that I got a call that there was an escape at the county jail. I said, well, who escaped? And they said, John Parsons. Disbelief, angered, how could this happen? Why did it happen? All these things was going through my mind. Angry, shocked, uh... You know, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that John Parsons had got out of jail. There was a lot of luck that went with John's escape. We believe that there was a diversion within the jail to draw the attention of this, the, the other CO. We believe John Parsons made his daring escape at that particular time. Also, the camera out in the wreck area was, uh, was just a outdated camera. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. And luck was on his side. There was a note left behind directed towards me saying, bye, Ron. I can only take that on John trying to be, you know, humorous. He thought it was funny, I suppose. I felt he was out of the state by the time that we got notified because there was probably uh, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour lapse between the time that he actually escaped until the notification was made. My plan was to leave the country, but the person who was supposed to give me a ride out of town let me down. I needed to leave the area as fast as possible, so I stole a bike and started heading the seven miles towards Frankfurt, where I used to live. I knew the cops would be there soon, but I had no choice. I needed help. To make things worse, I had broken my foot so I could barely pedal. When I came to a hill, I had to get off the bike and push. I was getting ready to go down to Carter to Lumber to pick some lumber up. So I got in a truck. I went down over the hill and seen a guy pushing a bicycle up with a t-shirt wrapped around his head. Well, it was kind of warm that day. But he, he turned his head away from me when I went past him. I said, ah, this don't seem right. And uh, my boy was mowing grass up there at right the edge of his property. I told him, I said, uh, did you see the guy that escaped from Ross County Jail? Yeah. I think I just seen him coming up the road. I think he's coming right over that hill. So we stood there for a few minutes. That's, there, there he is, there he is. And he came up around the corner. That's him, there's no doubt that's him. And then all of a sudden he looked up, and as soon as he looked up, he knew we was watching him. So my boy took off running down there where he'd went in the woods, off the side of the road. Scott got on his, on his cell phone right then and called 911. I'd been chief for seven years, and that's the first time I ran from my house, lights and siren in my car. We responded immediately to that scene and we're at the exact location where John Parsons had went into the woods off the